Uh, my name's Gavin Humphreys. I'm a producer at Quark Films. It's my company that I've run for six years. How did you um, come about uh, founding uh, Quark Films? Uh, so I was at the National Film and Television School in the UK. I did the producing course there for two years. And towards the end of the course there, um, I used to be an actor's agent for five years before that. And I went to the film school to learn about production and also um, with a view to just having my own company. So at the end of the course, me and uh, one of the other students decided to start our own company, mainly because we were making a short film for Film London and you have to have a company to do that. But we wanted to keep on going after the film school. And uh, what would you say is your typical day at the office? Um, if you're a producer, there's not really a typical day at the office. Um, it really depends week by week what projects you're working on. Um, if you're busy in development, that's obviously a lot of reading and meetings with writers, directors, financiers. If you're in production, it's entirely different. There's a lot of out of the office work, crewing up, finding locations, equipment, all that kind of stuff. So there isn't really an average day in the office for a producer at all. And. Um as a producer yourself and, and knowing other producers, uh, what's, a, what's a common way for them to f end up being a producer? Um, there isn't really a common route for producers to end up doing what they do. They come from all different areas of the industry. Of course, now with television growing, there are more TV producers that might be moving into film and film producers moving into TV. Uh, generally, they can come from uh, English literature at university backgrounds where they've worked in development and creative affairs and worked with writers developing projects. But similarly, they could have been very experienced line producers, production managers that understand production, lawyers, financiers. There isn't really one set path because there are the three main areas of producing. There's the creative, the business and the production side of it. So people can stream into any of those different areas. And if you, if you could, uh, how would you describe your job? What, what is your uh, job title and what are the, uh, what are the, the sub, subtitles for it? Um, there's only really one title and that's producer and that's enough for me. And as I said, that is a job that encompasses an awful lot of different roles and hats. But essentially it's project managing a, um, a film from its very inception quite often through to you know, months, years later when it's still being screened in cinemas, on television, at festivals, wherever. So you're involved, I think you're the only person really, apart from the director that's involved with the production from its real inception through to the end. As I said that can be a very long, long process, but you're involved in every area. And uh, how much did doing um, a master's degree, um, or just in general for other people, uh, any degree in, in a similar industry, um, how, how useful is that? Um, I don't think, I've never actually said, hi, I've got a master's degree, I'm, I, I'm a producer. I don't think having the actual qualification is significant for the industry. And in fact, in some ways they, they frown on it, which I think is wrong. but. The point is, it's, it's not really the qualification, it's the, the value of the institution or the place where you trained and what you made of it when you were there. So there are some places that obviously have a good name and are well regarded in the industry and people that do the courses at that film school or that college, they work in the industry in whatever capacity. Um, but ultimately, it's an industry where it's very meritocratic and it's down to you to make your own opportunities. Um, how often, are you, how many films are you producing a year, would you say? Um, there isn't really an average, but at the most extreme, uh, one year I've made two documentary features, four shorts, a short TV commission, a music video, a corporate film, uh, and other years I've made just two shorts, it really depends. What was your inspiration to go into uh, doing a degree as a, as a producer and changing, changing paths from your previous career? Um, yeah, so previously I was a talent agent and I had some relationships with film and television producers, but for me it was more about, I chose a film course because I wanted to fast track myself into the industry rather than work as an assistant again for somebody. Film itself is such a vast, um, area to understand and to to learn about and I felt it was worth the time to, to take out from 
my professional life to go and study again for two years and also meet people like myself who were starting out in the industry and wanting to be cinematographers, sound designers, composers, directors, writers, other producers and really learn with them and make films with them and hopefully carry through those relationships um, into the rest of my career which I have been lucky to do. And uh, what are the pros and cons between uh, setting up your own production company rather than uh, working for other companies? Um, the uh, biggest con is, con is probably the wrong, it sounds very dodgy, because uh, it is. Um, the biggest disadvantage is that financially it's incredibly difficult if you're starting your own company, uh, of course, because you really, in the creative industries, it's hard to build a company and grow it, particularly in film, I think, which is quite a small industry. So you have to have a bigger picture and maybe not just work in film, but look at digital platforms, television, other areas where you can make money and also build your expertise, build your financial resources, uh, build a team. Um, whereas if you work for another company, you're not your own boss, but at least you're earning a salary and you're maybe learning on the job, but your skill set that you're learning on that job is far more limited because you're working in a specific area probably. Cool. Uh, when you started, did you uh go into the industry with, with the ambition of making feature films or did you start with shorts and then you're just going one step at a time? Um, I originally had the ambition of making fiction feature films and then by virtue of going to film school and just uh, the NFTS in particular because they do animation and documentary as well as fiction films and learning that film in itself is not so sustainable when you're starting off your career it made sense to diversify and work across different creative industries, audiovisual industries. Um, yeah, I mean, so I went to the NFTS where I was already at an age where I had, you know, commitments. I had to pay a mortgage and to live in London, which is not cheap, as we all know. So the idea was to build a company that was sustainable, that could support myself and my business partner and for us to be able to work independently and not be employed by anybody. Um, as I said, in film, that's difficult to do, so you have to look to television, digital platforms, and increasingly bigger companies are doing that as well. And television, not just for financial reasons, but television is, is in some ways the superior medium right now for drama, a more creative and more interesting area to play and to work in. Have you ever faced the dilemma of having to turn down um, corporate shoots to avoid being sort of typecast as a corporate film producer? Um, I haven't done a great deal of corporate film shoots, but the, I think your question is quite pertinent because you also have to think about your identity as a producer or even as a director and the kind of projects that you do. And, you know, we all have to earn money and if you're a documentary director, maybe you have to do factual television or work as an AP for um, independent TV projects. But there comes a point where you really have to manage your workload and step back and think about the bigger picture and where you see yourself going because it can be quite tempting to fall onto that financial gravy train but to really work in film you have to spend a, more time upfront in development usually not paid tremendously well to develop your projects and move forward so you have there's a balance where you have to take on the, the paid work and and the, the projects that can feed clove you and pay your mortgage and your rent but then also have a bigger view that you need to step back and spend some time developing your, your feature projects.